Okay, so you know in the complex numbers we have this number i, which is the square root of negative one. So in this video we're gonna like answer the question, does it make sense there for there to be an i mod p? In other words, a square root of negative one mod p. And we'll do that with the notion of a quadratic residue and using this Legendre symbol and the associated properties of this Legendre symbol as tools. So let's recall that a is a quadratic residue mod p if there's a solution to x squared congruent to a a mod p. And the Legendre symbol is defined as follows. So we have these parentheses, then we have a by p is 1 if a is a quadratic residue, and it's negative 1 if it's not a quadratic residue. So the Legendre symbol is like a question, are you a quadratic residue? Okay, so what we want to look at is um, when is negative 1 a quadratic residue mod p, and it turns out that negative 1 is a quadratic residue mod p if and only if p is congruent to 1 mod 4. So those are the types of primes where the square root of negative 1 makes sense. So let's look at the proof of this. Um, and what we'll use is Euler's criterion. So let's recall Euler's criterion, which says that A uh, by P, so this Legendre symbol is A to the P minus 1 over 2 mod P. Okay, good. So now let's do that with negative 1. Uh, let's do that with negative 1 by P. So that's going to give us negative 1 to the P minus 1 over 2. Good. But then that's going to split up two into two different cases. So that'll be negative 1. And now let's replace P with 4K plus 1. In other words, P is congruent to 1 mod 4. So that's going to give us 4K plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2. Um, and down here, we'll do the case when P is 4K plus 3. So notice all odd primes have to be of one of those forms. And this is going to be negative 1 to the 4K plus 3 minus 1 divided by 2. Okay, great. But now, notice what we get here is the following. So in this case, the negative ones cancel and we get negative 1 to the 2k, which is obviously equal to 1, and now I'll replace uh, p equals 4k plus 1 as p is just congruent to 1 mod p, sorry, 1 mod 4. Good. And then over here, notice the 3 cancels uh, with the negative 1 to leave us 2, so this is negative 1 to the 2k plus 1, but now that's negative 1 to an odd number. So that's going to be negative 1, and I'll replace p equals 4k plus 3 with p is congruent to 3 mod 4. Good. And then that finishes this theorem. So notice if we're congruent to 1 mod 4, um, we get 1, which means you are a quadratic residue. And if you get 3, if P is 3 mod 4, you get negative 1, which means you are not a quadratic uh, residue. Okay, so good. I'll clean up the board. And then we'll look at some examples where we can calculate uh, very, very quickly if negative 1 has a square root modulo P. <laughs> Okay, so now we'll look at a couple examples. So first I want to look at a pretty simple example. So let's look at P equals 11. And so now 11, notice that is equal to uh, 4 times 2 plus 3, which tells us by this theorem that negative 1 is not a quadratic residue mod 11. So I won't check that, but what you'd have to do is square all the numbers between uh, 1 and 10, and you'll notice that none of them give you negative 1, which is 10 in this case. So now uh, let's look at another example. So let's look at P equals 29. So notice that's 4 times 7 plus 1. So that tells us that negative 1 is a quadratic residue in this case. So, and in fact, what we can notice is that 12 squared equals 144, which equals 145 minus 1. And uh, furthermore, 145 is exactly 
Uh, 29 times 5, so 5 times 29 uh, minus 1, so this is congruent to negative 1 mod 29. So not only did we say that it is a quadratic residue, but in this case we could say that the square root of negative 1 is 12, or i mod 29 is 12. Okay, good. So this is the end of the video.